Good evening. I call this hybrid meeting of the Dunwoody City Council to order on July 27th at 6 p.m. Is there any objection I'm calling this meeting to order? Seeing none, the meeting is called to order. Joe, can you please lead us in the invocation and then the pledge? At this council meeting, help us to make decisions with keep, which keep us faithful to our mission and reflect our values. Give us strength to hold our purpose, wisdom to guide us, and a keen perception to lead us. And above all, keep us charitable as we deliberate. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. We don't currently have anyone signed up. So if anyone on the Zoom meeting would like to speak for public comment, I have one Joe Hirsch. Hold on one moment. Okay, you should be able to unmute and speak now. You have three minutes, Joe. Thank you. You should be able to unmute yourself. You should be able to unmute yourself and speak. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, a proposed text amendment is expected to reach this body in August regarding allowing temporary signs in the Dunwoody Village. While it's not the biggest issue of our times, the topic represents the city's complete failures in performing as a functional city should. Typically when our city wants to make a huge change in policy, we hold civic engagement meetings, you know, where we spend tons of money on consultants to ask citizens questions like, how tall do you want the buildings in our city? city to be? What types of artwork do you want to see in our city? And our city pays for artist renderings of what the Dunwoody Overlay District would look like with a new park, with tree-lined streets, and beautiful bike paths going along the businesses. But with all those lengthy and expensive drawings, the city has never shown what it would look like with hundreds of crappy temporary signs along our streets. Why not? City staff says we've contemplated the idea of allowing signs in the village for a long time, if the city has not done its due diligence to show what it looks like to have banners and signs along the sidewalk advertising $20 oil changes or to buy one get one free smoothies along the formerly backward facing benches of Dunwoody Village Parkway. And there's no way any of, you, any of you on council can claim that the proposed changes will make things any better. Our ability to enforce things now is a complete disaster and our government exemplifies what a virus ship looks like. This council and mayor are attempting to make things up as you go along without any foresight or recognition of the incompetent staff you have on hand. When the city last week decided to selectively enforce removing the 10 illegal signs at Panera Bread Company, staff only removed six of them. And our mayor believes signs are the panacea for businesses' problems. But with Panera having 10 illegal signs, they're still having trouble keeping their doors open for business. So that theory has flopped. As you know, I did an Open Records Act request to find out who was requesting the sign changes for our Dunway Village. Zero requests were located. So I emailed each of you to disclose if perhaps you had any conversations with anyone asking for such a drastic change in the city. Councilwoman Talmadge was the only person who replied and I applaud her for that. But she said she would never disclose who asked for changes in our codes as she treats conversations privately as if it's a HIPAA violation or a confessional. But that's not how good government works. Government is supposed to be transparent. Backroom deals of politics affecting the residents are shunned, except in this city where it's celebrated for hiding information from residents who have to spend hundreds of dollars in records requests to find out the truth. The you have 30 seconds remaining. The proposal for changing our sign codes has countless mistakes in judgment and our ability to enforce, nor does it even include the drastic changes as being temporary as Richard Hatchcock of our community development falsely claims. Our city is already inept. You selectively enforce the rules to your whims while forgetting why we became a city. 
what a shame this city has become. Thank you. Is there anyone else, Ginger? I do not see any more hands raised. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand in the Zoom application. I still see no hands raised at this time. Thank you. We'll have another comment session at the end. Um, is There's no one here to speak, so that concludes council comments. I mean, uh, public comment. Consent agenda, uh, which is this time is just the approval of the July 13th, 2020 meeting meeting minutes. Does any council person have any questions or comments? Um, Thank you, Madam Mayor. I noticed on the uh, meeting minutes that were published on Friday or Thursday that numbers 11 and 12 need to be updated. I talked to the city clerk uh, this morning. She's reviewed it and gone over it to make sure that it was completely accurate. Uh, council, you may want to look at the minutes that have been republished as to numbers 11 and 12 and they accurately and fairly uh, show what happened at the meeting. Again, there's a problem in the publishing aspect of it. It's been republished and they want to read 11 and 12 of the not accurate the, uh, the text. Sure right now. They are, as far as I'm concerned, they are. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Anything else? John, you need to speak up a little bit. Okay. Anybody else have anything? Seeing none. Move to pass the consent agenda. Move by Jim. Second. Second by John. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 That sharing that's unanimous. Mayor, give me one moment. Um, I'm having just a technical difficulty with the minutes. I just want to go in and back right back out. I'll be right back. It'll just take a second. Bear with me a moment. Almost there. Okay. The next item on the agenda under business items is approval of a contract for pavement reconstruction on Dunwoody Club Drive, and that's Michael Smith. Good evening. Dunwoody Club Drive and one of the side streets, Ashley Trace, are in the city's paving plan for 2020. And the process of evaluating Dunwoody Club um, for resurfacing, we determined that the existing pavement is not thick enough for the amount of traffic that's on that road. Uh, and there's no way to really build up the existing asphalt because you have a curb out there. and There's only so much asphalt you can put on there before you uh, cover up the curb. 
So the recommendation is to recycle the existing asphalt into the subgrade and create a new stronger base that we would then build a new pavement on top of. And that's, we've used this technique on a number of neighborhood streets, it's called full depth reclamation. Uh, and at the end of the process, we'll basically have a new, new pavement, a new street. Um, it's current, the Domini Clubs currently has a lot of patches and cracks and is, and that's, that's why it's on the paving list. Um, the project, we advertised the project. It was not part of Blunt's original scope. Who Blunt was who did our paving earlier this year and has completed it. And at the time they said they, they couldn't allocate a crew to do this work. And although they did end up submitting a, a bid, as you will see, uh, we advertised, advertised the project for bid and we received six bids, which represents just about everybody in town that does this type of work. So we get, we get, we got a good response. Allied Paving submitted the lowest bid at 327,270. And then subsequent to the bid, we asked Allied to submit a quote based on their bid unit prices to finish the paving on Mill Glen Drive. Earlier this year, we paved the Eastern end of Mill Glen, but we had to, to wait on the West end while we determined there's a culvert there that needs to be replaced and we wanted to make sure that we didn't have to dig the culvert up before we paved that end of the road. So they, they have submitted a price for that and the total recommended contract award is 417,445 plus a 10% contingency. The cost is within the city's budgeted amount for paving. And the goal is to get the project started as soon as we can so that we can complete the work while traffic is still light and the weather is, we still have favorable weather. So we're, we're requesting approval of the contract with LI Paving. Okay, any questions? Go ahead, John. Michael, we sometimes share a order with uh, Sandy Springs on Dunwoody Club. Is this uh, any of this paving being done in Sandy Springs in conjunction with Sandy Springs or any sharing with the whatsoever? This is the part of, uh, east of Happy Hollow that's the, the whole road is within Dunwoody. And we're up, this project is only the part from Happy Hollow to the city limit. It goes into Gwinnett and then back into Dunwoody. We'll, we'll deal with the eastern end at Winter's Chapel as part of the uh, path project that we're working on out there. So this is this contract would be for Happy Hollow to the city limit, which is fully within Dunwoody. So everything's within Dunwoody, there's no Gwinnett portion then as well. Right, well, that part will be left. It's, it's actually in better shape, and, and I'm not sure what Gwinnett's plans for it are, but this would just be the Dunwoody piece. That's my only question. I appreciate the answer. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Um, this is Stacy. I have a question for Michael. Go ahead. Um, Mill Glen had speed speed humps on it. So since we're going to finish paving it, how do the speed bumps get put back on? And, and is that blunt or is that allied or where does that come from? Um, we're going to get Allied's price was a little high for that. We did ask for that, but it was a little high. We can, we'll get somebody else to do it uh, cheaper, but it will be done after the, the road is paved. Thanks, I'm good. All right. Anybody else? Okay, I don't think you need one. All right, so Michael, um, let's just, is that about a, so when I look at the city border, is that only about a third of a mile headed? I'm trying to see it. It's not going to Winter's Chapel, correct? It's just I'm looking at the city border kind of zigzags out. So we're only talking about maybe about a third of a mile total on this project? That's correct. All right, coming down the hill past the creek. All right, I see that. So that's a question. You say um, the budget is already, these are in the 2020 SMOST fund budgets? Yes, yeah, so we, we did not spend all the paving money this year. Uh, on the previous contract because we have these roads planned and then we there's a couple of roads like Peeler and Tilly Mill that we have to get the sidewalk completed before we can pay it. Right. Um, and we know last council meeting that Linda briefed us that we are 11% down year to date for SPLOS funding income revenue. So I was wondering how we are kind of prioritizing spending that if we know that we're having a reduction in SPLOS funds and we may 
Are we going to be at a negative here? Are we going to be break even with black? No, we won't be in a negative. Um, the, the proposed kind of modified SCLOS plan had some other projects that won't really get started until late in the year. So that money is not mostly not going to be spent. And then some of the original money budgeted for paving has not been spent yet. So it, that's all factored in. Okay, so just to triple confirm, this was in the 2020 plan. Yes. And you're just breaking it out separately and that's what you're doing here. Correct. Okay, all right, okay. Um, and then I'll just leave it at, if we're doing the 2021, I, I look forward to just re looking at the reality of the new world post COVID and just reallocating those priorities of the SWAS funds, just really sitting down and looking at how we can be very conservative in our estimates going forward as well. Okay. Right, right. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments, Pam? Not like she's there. <laughs> um, all right, seeing none. Move to approve. Moved by Jim. Second. Second. By John. Uh, any further questions or discussion? No. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Pam and Stacy. Yes. Aye. Okay. Uh, Sharon, that's unanimous. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. The next item on the agenda, number four, is approval of Flock Group Incorporated Additional Services Agreement, and that is Chief Logan. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good to see you, or at least part of you. <laughs> Um, this is the approval of the Flop Group Additional Services Agreement to lease some additional LPRs and security cameras uh, in our parks. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, for the council, we did uh, look at where we needed uh, to make sure we had coverage for that third entrance uh, to Brooklyn Park. And in order to do that, we uh, have looked at the, the map and want to make sure we get coverage for the baseball fields as well. And so we've decided that the best way to get that coverage is to put the cameras, two cameras, one on each end of Markley, which will provide that coverage. One end will be close to um, to uh, North Beach Street, but the other end will be probably in some a little bit, so that you know, we'll figure out exactly where it goes. But uh, that's there. And I know John had raised a question about the LPR at the Waterford Pool and Tennis. Uh, we'll put that wherever the agreement or with it, wherever the uh, the association is agreeable to it. Uh, Brent talked to one of the representatives, but certainly the whole board hadn't had a chance to consider it. It'll be a little bit of time before it's uh, put up. So if they're amenable to it, we'd prefer to put it toward the front of the subdivision. And we'll only do so if, they're, if they agree to do that. And otherwise we'll put it back at the park. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Chief. Um, the main reason that I was looking at it closely is that it's an obligation that the city has in purchasing the Waterford property. The contract for the purchase says that the LPR will be actually on our park property, and uh, the memo shows today that we are putting it at the front of the neighborhood. So I just want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence and following the contract and uh, putting it on the property uh, as we contracted to do so. So, and, and this is Cecil. This is Cecil. Just, um, I think, to the extent the chief, if the HOA consents to it at the front of the subdivision, and there's only one entrance in and out, um, I think we would be good as far as that condition under the contract goes, getting the HOA's consent. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, Cecil. Was the last couple words? Can you just repeat it a little that, that, if the HOA consents to it being at the front and it being a one entrance subdivision, um, I think that we would be consistent with the contract to put them in that location. And by their consent, I don't think anyone could raise an issue with that. So then the purchase agreement of the contract on the land on the purchase wouldn't have to be modified. It would just be accepted. It, it would not, it would not need to be modified. It says the park property shall maintain current safety features. And I think by, because it's a one entrance subdivision, and if the HOA consents, 
we will have everyone that came and went to the park. Um, I think to meet that provision, if there were multiple entrances, we'd have to cover all entrances. But with one entrance, HOA consent, we're good under the contract without a modification. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. That was my only question. Anybody else? No. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Jim. Second by John. Um, any additional questions or discussion? All right. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Sharon, that's unanimous. Thank you. Moving to discussion items, the next item is funding authorization for construction of Ashford Dunwoody Commuter Trail Phase One. That's Michael Smith. The, this project, the uh, Ashford Dunwoody Path, originated out of uh, from the CIB's commuter st trail study they did a few years ago, and the city since has incorporated it into our transportation plan. The project consists of a dedicated cycle track similar to the ones that we have, uh, that have been built recently on Hammond Drive and Perimeter Center West. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, just on Perimeter, on Hammond Drive. Phase one of the project is on Ashford Dunley Road, Road in front of the mall between Hammond and Perimeter Center West. Uh, in addition to the cycle track, the project includes sidewalk, landscaping, lighting, a, a new Marvin bus shelter, some decorative elements, um, the design has been completed. The project's ready to start construction as soon as we have the right-of-way agreement with the mall owner finalized. Um, we have obtained a cost estimate from Autoco, who's one of our unit price contractors, and that's what's included here. The total estimated cost for all of the construction is just over $1.1 And the, the CIP board has already voted to approve paying for half the construction plus all the decorative elements on the project. So the city's cost will be less than half, it'll be 490,000 paid out of budgeted funds from the hotel motel tax. Um, we're, we're bringing this authorization, funding authorization request forward tonight for council consideration. We're gonna bring it back uh, for final, for a final approval when once the right of way agreement's ready, we'll bring both of those back together. Uh, but wanted to go ahead and put this out there to, and hopefully that agreement will be coming soon. Um, okay, any questions? I have a comment. Comments. I'd just like to say thanks to our friends at the Perimeter Community Improvement yeah. Districts and Linda, John, if y'all are watching, thank you for your support. Love working with you. Yep, I was going, thanks, Jim. I was going to uh, ditto that. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Uh, it's, a, it's a great day, obviously. And uh, I think we're leading the way here in uh, the metro region and in all of Georgia, for making a, a community like, like we're doing. Uh, I really look forward to this. Um, I'd love to see a little groundbreaking ceremony and digging some shovels in the dirt with some photo ops as we're putting in, in, in the ground. I think it's a be really to be proud of. Um, no way we can get Georgia Power just to pay for their own utility bill. The, the big ones out there? Well, oh, the, the ones, the cost in here is to, to replace the decorative lighting oh, that's out there. Okay. Uh, th there's lighting out there, but in CID looking at it, Georgia Power looking at it, rather than trying to, uh, but it's, some of it's faded, and rather than, they, they just recommended that we go ahead and replace it all. Okay. Um, Anybody else? It's exciting. I'm so excited. All right, so you'll bring this back when you're ready with the right away? Yes. Okay. This is great news. Good stuff. Absolutely. Very positive. Thank you. Thank you. Number six under discussion items is ordinance amendment to allow package sales of beer and wine by restaurants with food orders. Michael Starling. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Good evening. Uh, tonight's discussion item is on allowing package sales of beer and wine by restaurants with food orders on a permanent basis. As you know, uh, this is allowed uh, under the uh, emergency orders uh, that were passed earlier. It's been a, a very, um, a lot of 
local governments have done this. So many of them have done it that the state actually made a change to their rules to allow this. Um, takeout is going to, I think we can all agree, be a very important part of the revenue stream for restaurants for the foreseeable future. And it's certainly you know, important to help restaurants compete whenever we can. And one way to do that would allow them to sell package uh, with to-go food orders. Uh, a number of cities have recently uh, amended their ordinance to expressly allow this on a permanent basis beyond uh, the emergency orders. Um, and a number of council members have come to us asking if we should follow their lead. Uh, I've talked to Cecil and Bill. Um, they've looked over our ordinances and we don't believe that is necessary at this time. Uh, we do not um, forbid that. We just simply follow what the state says. As long as the state allows it, um, the city will allow it. Um, but uh, a number of you have asked about it, so we wanted to bring it to you. I know Bill and Cecil are both um, on the line, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions? Go ahead, Tom. Uh, so this um, ordinance would be restricted or limited to beer and wine, and that would be in a sealed container that like a bottle of beer or a, or a full bottle of wine it wouldn't be single serve other than the, the provisions for, for growler shops and stuff like that is that is that correct exactly yes and and, it, and this would not include um any alcohol uh spirit drinks uh with spirits for example if i went to uh, los hermanos and wanted to get a to-go margarita that would not be allowed under this is that correct that's correct. I, it's my understanding it, it's only um, beer and wine that is sealed. Would extending an ordinance such as this to include a mixed drink or something in a sealed container, would that be inconsistent with state law or, or would that be allowed? I'll ask Cecil or Bill to, to okay. expand on that. That would be inconsistent. Okay. Did you say inconsistent, Bill, or Cecil? Yes, inconsistent. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm good. So, as I understood it early, from earlier today when I talked to Michael, there's a chance that we don't actually need an ordinance, right? You don't need an ordinance right now. I've reviewed our ordinance. Our ordinance has no prohibition uh, to to do this. The the new state regulation. I, uh, has allowed uh, those that are have uh, on-premises consumption of beer and wine to sell to sell beer and wine to go as part of the food item. For instance, if you wanted if you wanted to order wings from Wild Wings and say put put a six pack of that craft beer you carry in with my uh, order, you could you could make that order. You could go to the front door for the takeout call in, someone would come out, check your ID, and you could drive off with your wings and your, uh, with your craft beer. Okay. So I think we're done then, yeah. right? We don't have to talk about this again, is that correct? Yeah, I, I think right now we, we, we should not <clears throat> change anything because, because it's allowed. Obviously we should, should keep an eye on, on what the state does and what other communities do, but we just wanted to make sure that we answered your questions because I think we all agree it's important to support them where we can. And this is a very important revenue stream for restaurants when they're struggling um, sort of at every twist and turn. But right now we suggest not making any changes. Yeah, my comment would be, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of no action, which is allowing this per the state regulation. I think that's the, the sense of the council and let's tell our restaurants about this in case they don't know about it. Right. So I think, Michael, it's just a matter of how we communicate with the restaurants. Yep. Yep. I'll work with Jennifer and Rosemary on, on how, you know, making sure they understand the, the existing state rules and that we do not prohibit this activity. Right. It was the, because um, that's how we all picked up on it was press releases and Facebook posts from other cities. Yep. That's how it goes. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, um, Ginger, 
think we're to the public comment section of the meeting again. Okay, if anyone would like to speak for public comment, please raise your hand in the Zoom application. I do not see any hands raised at this time. Okay. Um, city manager comments? Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to go over our uh, weekly report from last week. Uh, just so we don't get it tonight, we've changed the format of the report, which is a little bit more um, uniform. So with the, uh, the police department, a um, couple of items there. We did conduct a pedestrian crosswalk detail at Mount Vernon and Stratham Drive and Peeler and Linwood Drive, and we issued a total of 12 VRU citations. The, um, our crime response team also coordinated commercial vehicle detail on 285 with the Georgia Motor Carrier Compliance Division on Thursday of last week. We had 37 citations were issued and several trucks were taken out of service. So these are things the police department continues to do to keep our roads safe. Um, we did also have officers respond to a hit and run accident. The subject had left the scene. Uh, the offender was later located and fled from the officers. And then we located and charged the driver with a DUI and other traffic charges. Um, as of this report, there are no officers out due to COVID-19. So that's, that's a real positive thing. Uh, Public Works, Atlanta Gas Light is preparing for underground boring to install the new gas and vein for Shanley Dunley at Spalding. The boring's going to begin this week. Uh, AT&T continued to relocate the aerial lines for, uh, to new poles for the Tilling Mill sidewalk project. They were expecting this to be complete in August. Um, notice to proceed was given to uh, firm in truck, uh, construction 57 to begin the Peeler Road sidewalk construction. Um, also on the stormwater side of public works, uh, maintenance has been performed at Peeler Road, Lakeside Drive, Dunwoody Village Parkway, the Ray Drive, and Buckline Crossing. We're also working with DeKalb County on a sewer line inspection related to a sinkhole on Amberley Drive. In public works, all staff continue to work remotely except for field construction managers. Uh, parks, uh, the demolition of 50 perimeter center east is about 90% complete. Uh, the water for demo uh, should begin the first week of August. We're working on punch list items for Brook Run Park, about 95% complete with that. Also, the disc golf should be done by the end of this week. Um, Austin demolition bids were pushed back until August 15th. We're working with the school system to uh, get their final items out of the building. We actually have a walkthrough scheduled with the school system on August the 12th. Um, bids for them to see for the resurfacing are, are going out for resurfacing of tennis courts at the Woodward Hollow and Waterford Drive, and they're due back at the end of this month. So we're moving forward for that project as well. Um, other highlights, we have we've had about 60 people sign up for the 31 and 31 challenge. Um, as you all saw last week, we had Brook Run Park showcased on Fox 5, a morning show. We had a lot of, a lot of coverage on that. Also, um, on the uh, COVID-19 update for this department, uh, moratorium on all park rentals special events through December 31st. We'll revisit that on a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly basis as things uh, could change or hopefully for the better. But right now the moratorium is in existence for the park rentals. Uh, playgrounds through the parks continue to be disinfected twice a day, seven days a week. Additional after hours cleanings are done on the standalone bathrooms throughout the park system. Community development, uh, there were 46 building inspections completed last week. Um, we also did submit the State Farm Campus for the ARC Development of Excellence Award. Um, a couple of code enforcement highlights, we did issue a failure to appear for work with the court for a repeated uh, trash can violation. 
thing that I'm also on Peeler Road on the septic tank issue pad. The water has been turned off on that property and we're hoping, I think it's for tomorrow, there should be an abatement hearing on that house so we can go ahead and put a lien on the property and complete the work on the septic tank to repair the system. Code enforcement did issue 10 warning notices last week and also had nine lien inspections. Uh, we do have code enforcement officers working in the office nearly every day, and the planners in the office Tuesday through Thursday. Uh, economic development, public arts implementation plan, we're working with the arts consultant on the draft recommendations, and they're due by the end of July. We're planning a virtual public engagement meeting scheduled for the second week of August. Picnic table project continues to implement the picnic table. Uh, with the restaurants and um, our nonprofit partners on that. Now, with the Development Authority is planning a board retreat for August 18th to discuss strategic direction of the authority and update economic development strategy later this fall. Uh, economic activity of uh, branch properties continues to move forward with free development activities at Perimeter Marketplace. The AC Hotel continues to move forward with vertical construction at 121 Perimeter Center West. And the Hyatt Place Hotel is planning on opening over Labor Day weekend. Um, we did also conduct 11 business retention calls last week and two uh, business recruitment calls. Um, well, as far as um, information technology or the COVID update for them, I'll go over. Um, they are working still on there as we're live right now with one of our hybrid meetings, continue to work on hosting the Zoom meetings. And all staff is working remotely and they're on, and on site as needed due to any changes. Uh, marketing communication, um, we designed and secured census ad space for six bus shelters and high traffic areas. We also, um, The upcoming issues we have for the for communications are press releases for the Austin demolition and other park projects, disc golf to include how to play, also the uh, Tilly Mill and Andover improvements, and the Tilly Mill Fever sidewalk improvements. So, those are things that uh, we continue to work on to get, uh, keep the uh, public informed of the projects we're, we're dealing with. Municipal Court held six arraignment uh, calendars. Uh, disposed of 135 cases and we set 22 cases. Citations continue to come in to that department. We are working on uh, making sure people are notified if they have a failure to appear or any kind of other warrant to get those, uh, to get the public a chance to rectify some problems. Um, we'll continue to prep each week the um, the dockets for the following week. We work on that on Mondays and Fridays, and of course, the court is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays of each week. Also, we did have to reset 12 cases due to COVID-19 reasons from the defendants testing positive. So we are going through a, a still a very good screening process for that and allowing people the flexibility to um, reschedule if there's any doubt that they have COVID-19. Um, the deputy clerks, as well as the court clerk are coming into office and um, they're working about four hours on Monday in the office to run the GCIC reports. Uh, that has to be done in the building. We're also, um, the city clerk's office is working on the 2020 Park uh, Charter Commission meetings, processed 57 open record requests last week. Um, Human Resources is working on filling three open officer positions that we currently have, and also working with our benefit brokers as it's time for open enrollment in the fall. Um, that concludes the report. I'll be glad to answer any questions on the report as well as the staff. Okay, Eric, I have several questions, both about Austin Elementary uh, in the sense of the demolition. I have two concerns. One is remediation of environmental uh, those buildings have been in there for a long time. There may be oil, there may be other contaminants. I want to make sure those are dealt with fairly. And my other real concern is uh, we've dealt with buildings in the past, and mainly uh, Brook Run, the hospitals. Uh, those buildings at Austin have been vacant for a long time. There may be rodent issues. I want to make sure that we do a fair rodent um, 
review of those buildings before any buildings get taken down. I don't want the buildings taken down, the rats to go to the nearest house. So if you could make sure that that's an important issue, let's just make sure that we are covering that aspect. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Ma'am? Stacy? Uh, Mayor, we will need to take your session tonight for uh, real estate and litigation. Real estate and litigation. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, council comments. Uh, I'll start with the people. Pam, do you have anything? Yeah, just real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, three young ladies here in Dunwoody who um, achieved their gold award on July um, 19th, Sarah McElroy, Sharika um, Madavian, and Anna Wilkinson. So congratulations to those young ladies on such a huge achievement. Thank you, Stacy. Um, I just want to say thank you to uh, Rosemary Watson, Michael Starlin for the Dunwoody Picnic Table Project. Um, it's, you know, gaining momentum. I know a couple more people, a couple more tables were done last week. Um, I encourage, you know, residents of the city of Dunwoody, if you're artistic and would like to decorate a table, I know there are some still, some to be done. If, you know, uh, Dunwoody art students, you know, I, I think a Wildcat Pride table needs to be done, just saying. Um, but what a great idea, and I really look forward to when the temperature might be a little bit cooler and I can, uh, you know, enjoy a nice dinner on one of the picnic tables. Thank you to them. Uh, Tom. Um, nothing city related. I just had to take a moment of personal <laughs> privilege to wish my dad a happy 75th birthday. So. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And he gets a repeat. If it's in a pandemic, that's not cool. That's right. Everything gets a repeat. Everything gets a repeat. Yeah, I'd like to uh, you know, give, give some recognition to some of our Girl Scouts. Last Sunday, a week ago, eight days ago, I attended a, uh, a, a Gold Award ceremony for Scout Sarah McElroy, Shreva Madavanan, and Anna Wilkinson. They all, they all have obtained the highest award in uh, Girl Scouting, and uh, kudos to them. They've done some wonderful things for our city and our world. Yeah. John. Um, so just a couple things. One is that uh, we are marking the passing of John Lewis, Congressman Lewis today. And, um, you know, more than anything in his life, he was always kind. If you ran into him at the past section at Dillard's or Macy's or at an event, he always acted like you were the most important person in the room and took time to speak to everyone. And, um, and so with this message of justice for all, I think we need to also practice kindness in his memory. Um, you know, he made a lot of sacrifices for this country. And um, I think the least we could all do is focus on being kind. It's fairly easy to always be kind. Um, and with that, I need a motion for executive session for it's not personnel, it's just real estate. Um, let me just clarify what, what Bill Ryan is. I believe it was do real estate and litigation, not okay. the personnel. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Riley? Uh, you turn your mic on. Uh, with a litigation and, uh, and, and the uh, real estate, that's it. Move to move into an executive session for personnel and real estate. Second. Oh, wait, wait, no. Litigation. Litigation. Oh. Will you accept a correction? Uh, yes, okay. litigation. So a motion uh, moved by John for litigation and real estate. Second by Jim for litigation and real estate. Uh, any questions or discussion? Seeing none, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No, any opposition signified by saying nay. Seeing none, it passes unanimously. Uh, we will be back after executive session. So we don't have to walk out anymore.
Yes, I'm up, Mayor. Yes. All right. I need a motion for here. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Pam moved. Second. Second by Tom. Uh, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Nope. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much.